YouTube viewers, Rectangular back, this time with another episode of Rect and Tangled where I show some of the behind the scenes of a recent ACBA setup. For those not in the know, ACBA stands for, it's an acronym, stands for Articulated Comic Book Art, and it is the hobby that is consuming most of my time lately. So, um, did this pretty quickly. Um, I originally had been working on cutouts for the uh, haul that's going to be coming up here, but um, realized that I had already shot this haul with Fin Fang Foom. This is haul number 55, and wanted to show him off. So I had to go back and find some um, find a scene that I wanted to do. I had it in my head originally when I first got Foom that um, I wanted to use this uh, Marvel Universe uh, three and three quarter inch scale Iron Man in the shot with him or in the scene, and so that's why I got that figure. And um, so then I found a. Uh, comic where he it was actually uh, Rhodes was um, fighting Fin Fang Foom as Iron Man he's wearing the neoclassic uh, armor um, but you this suit works pretty well um, this figure works pretty well because uh, you can't see his feet in the shot so anyway I found I can't remember which issue of Iron Man that is from but I will link it I'll put it in the description um, and anyway so I found a cutout where basically Rhodes was running away from Foom and um, there was actually two cutouts one that said uh, mortal dot 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 and then it continues with another cutout on the other side of the panel that says you have insulted Fin Fang Foom so um, I didn't really feel like trying to find a way to place the mortal cutout on the left side and it just number one it was not worth my time and number two I just didn't think it was appropriate for the shot it didn't it was just kind of be distracting if there was a uh, you know, two cutouts kind of at the same level, um, straight across from each other. So I just went with the one, and I'll zoom in on that one. Hopefully, it won't. Uh, it'll stay in focus. There we go. So um, obviously, this is the uh, Hasbro build a figure Fin Fang Foom, and I had to turn my um, my picture display stand uh, sideways so that I could. Uh, get it have enough length um, so that he wasn't right up against uh, the background. I use a black uh, piece of fabric um, from the um, hobby store. It's uh, I think just polyester black material. Um, a lot of people use uh, like terry cloth which is uh, what most um, towels are made out of. Um, but fortunately this works pretty well. It does have um, a little bit of a gray uh, sheen to it and it has uh, it's a little bit it picks up lint quite a well quite well so I need to get a lint roller to try to clean it up a little bit but um, for the most part I'm pretty happy and um, there you can see the cutout and uh, towards the end of the video I'm going to show um, just how time-consuming it is to once you find a cutout from a comic book um, that you want to use most of the comics I have were um, scanned digitally from um, actual paper comics so the quality is pretty poor you know all of these comics are from the 60s 70s and early 80s you know they're 30 plus years old and scanners also um, from a few years ago really weren't that great so when you combine the two um, and you have you know digital compression on top of that it's um, it's really hard you have to go back 
and digitally clean up the comic before you print it out otherwise it it looks terrible so um, hopefully you can see um, how legible that cutout is and how white the background is um, I'm gonna hopefully you'll see when uh, I do kind of like a tutorial showing you um, what it takes to to get them looking like that um, hopefully you'll appreciate all the time and effort um, involved with that it it takes you know depending on the cutout um, it can take an hour to just to do one um, depending on how bad it looks or um, you know if there's um, a lot of different words involved so this one I think t took about an hour um, maybe a little less but um, then you have to once you get it printed out you have to um, cut it and then touch it up and, and all that jazz and it's just stuck on there with some sticky tack and these uh, flame effects came from uh, my buddy uh, AJ Frost who um, is really a master with a glue gun so they are just made of hot glue and um, Tamiya or Tamiya um, model paints. Uh, he uses a, a clear coat um, enamel, not enamel, sorry, clear coat. Um, why am I totally escaping? Um, <laughs> totally escaping. In fact, it's right here. Acrylic, duh. So this is. Uh, just one of the types of this is the brand um, that he mostly uses uh, for clear. There's not too many companies that make a clear coat um, acrylic, so I got this off of eBay and um, got it so that I can touch up these effects when they um, start to either lose um, color or. Uh, break up or break apart a little bit and also to make my own and also to fix my um, silver centurion that needs to be repainted so um, like I said I have my review station turned sideways so that I can get uh, everything fitting in the shot and it's just on a piece of um, um, poster board black poster board and you know, Iron Man just standing there. This is a um, circular uh, flame effect that AJ made. Um, I think he sent these to me for uh, my birthday um, last year in October. We both uh, share a birthday in October. And um, it turned out really nice. You couldn't see in the shot, but they are um, uh, like uh, orange at the bottom and then red at the top. So he spent a lot of time. Uh, making this and they're super realistic looking um, so I promised that I would uh, do a setup and show off his work and I'm glad I was able to find an appropriate time to use them and let's see this uh, castle is just one piece of a, an entire castle place that I only have the one um, wall and um, you might have seen this used in another um, another display I did with the uh, Electra and uh, let's see I'm gonna take the camera off of the tripod so we can get a look at how I got this uh, effect piece um, on here I had to use a um, basically like a flight stand there's a uh, wire flight stand that's in the back of the playset, oh, you can see the back there. I have it bent. Whoa, we're upside down. So these are those um, marker flags, property flags that you can get from the hardware store, and um, I just have it uh, bent into the playset, kind of like um, like a letter Z. So it's going down and then up and then um, out so you can see um, the bottom 
of the effect is um, being supported by the by the wire and have a couple of those uh, translucent rubber bands strapping it on there and it was rolling off it's, it's got some weight to it so I had to um, put some sticky tack on the bottom to keep it from uh, rolling off and um, just have it placed inside his mouth there and I, you know I had to line up the shot so that it was angled down towards Iron Man but I couldn't put the camera too far down otherwise you could see the wire um, sticking out from underneath and then I couldn't have the camera tilted too up or you could see the shelf where I have all my lights so it's tricky tricky business trying to get everything aligned and so here it is on the camera is on the back on the tripod forgive the shakiness and there we go so let's move on to showing you a little bit of how um, I go about cleaning up cutouts on the computer okay so very quickly I'm gonna try to get through this as fast as I can um, I have a lot of digital comics saved on my computer and I use an application called Comic Rack which is free to download and um, it allows you to export pages from the comics to a JPEG which is your standard uh, image file format and once you get it saved to your hard drive as a JPEG then um, I use a program called paint.net which is uh, another free program that uh, has most of this, the basic functionality of Photoshop lets you do um, quite a bit of uh, edits to pictures so this is uh, from Iron Man 271 page 29 and I want to use just this cutout here uh, where it says you have insulted Fin Fang Foom and so I'm just going to crop it out and once I get the image cropped, crop it a little tighter, then I'm going to zoom in and I don't know if it's going to show up on camera but you can, there's a lot of pixelization that's all around the letters and I'm going over here, I already swapped, my primary was black, I already swapped it to white and I'm going to go to my paintbrush, that is a uh, huge, that's 60 pixels wide, I'm going to go down to 4 and I'm going to paint all these areas that are uh, white that have uh, pixelization in there where um, basically when the comic was uh, digitized there was a you know a little bit of a paint bleed from the original comic that went into the word bubble and the uh, scanner picked that up and uh, that area got um, you know the scanner told that uh, told that computer to redraw all these areas with all this blue and um, red and gray um, bleeding into the white so we're basically going back and trying to clean up all those areas that are um, showing up as uh, blue and pink and purple and gray and blue um, and try to repaint all those areas white um, so it's pretty painstaking I'm going through this very fast just to give you an idea of um, you know how how much time it takes to go in and, and clean up your image before you resize it and print it because um, if you don't do that it's gonna look uh, really um, rough the, your cutouts not gonna look clean and crispy if you um, check out some of my early haul videos that I started to do ACBA in um, I was not doing this with most of my cutouts I was taking directly I, I was just cutting them directly out of comics and uh, they they look rough <laughs> they look like old um, comics 
even the ones that um, were packaged with those Toy Biz figures, um, you know, those were printed in the in the early 2000s, and um, they still look uh, really rough compared to um, taking it from a digital source and uh, cleaning it up and printing them out that way. So um, hopefully this was helpful. Um, a lot of people don't understand how uh, uh, digitization of images works, but um, basically every time you save an image it uh, it gets pixelated so you want to do all your edits at one time save it once and uh, and then print it and and hopefully you you know your your work was done properly the first time um, if you screwed something up I I would recommend just going back and doing it all over um, instead of uh, Editing it, editing it again and resaving it because like I said it's going to get uh, pixelated every time you save it so if I save it now um, and go back and change it it will have already compressed the image again and uh, it'll just add more um, digital artifacts that I'll have to go back and clean up oh one more thing if this was just regular word bubbles I would go into here and uh, convert it to black and white because I don't um, don't need all that color to be printed out but um, since I do want the purple to show up uh, I want to keep that um, purple and um, if I wanted to I could try and uh, digitally like repaint um, the purple in here so it's not quite so muddy when I print it out but I just left it alone. I didn't want to make it um, any worse. And sometimes I'll go back and um, darken this up either uh, digitally um, or with just my Sharpie, just darken the letters. Um, and sometimes I do both just to make it a little bit um, crisper um, as far as all the letters go. All right, well, hopefully, you guys like the video. You hit the like button, share with your friends, and if you haven't already, please subscribe, and I love hearing back from you guys, so please leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. That's crispy.